All right. Let's get my face on the screen. There we go. Cool. So if you're in the chat, just give me a hey, what's up? I'm about like five or ten minutes early, um, so I'm gonna wait for some people to load in and all that. Um, so as you've probably seen, tweeted out and messaged, I'm gonna do stuff a little bit different tonight and focus on Redshift in Houdini. Um, I can only talk about Cinema 4D so much. I've covered a lot in that, so I wanna start showing how to do similar things inside of Redshift for Houdini tonight. Um, I'm gonna go over a couple other things too beforehand, just like uh, some people I wanna give shout outs to just to like awesome work they've been doing in uh, Redshift um, and just some like updates too. So what's up Serge, thanks for the thumbs up. I appreciate that. Anyone else, whatever channel you're watching on, just give me a quick little, hey, what's up? But uh, we'll give it like, I don't know, another, another two minutes or so before I start going through uh, just normal updates. So this should be exciting. I'm not a huge Houdini user. I've been trying to get into it for like a year and I've just been like slowly piecemeal <laughs> together, like little bits and pieces here and there. Um, if you aren't in the BroGraph Slack that they talk about every week on their podcast, go to BroGraph.com slash Slack if you are a Houdini user because they have an awesome Houdini channel. That's where I've been getting most of my help. Um, there's also a, a Discord channel, or there's actually like two or three now that I've found um, that helps out a lot as well. But if you if you want to chat Houdini at all, the BroGraph Slack and their Houdini channel has been really awesome. So let's see, it's 8.54. I'm going to give it till 8.55, and then I want to start giving some shout outs to some, piece, to some people cannot talk tonight apparently. I think, I think I'm a little flustered from going into Houdini <laughs> instead of Cinema 4D. I usually have like this all worked out and rehearsed. Um, so this is kind of, kind of gonna be interesting. Someone is <laughs> texting me. All right, so cool. All right, let's switch into main screen. So we're, we're close enough. I, I want to get moving. All right, so uh, I've noticed in the last few weeks, not just uh, like Redshift and Houdini, which we're going to be talking about tonight, um, but just a lot more people being active with just like Redshift in many different platforms. So that's why I had Tokyo Megaplex on last week, and he was using it in Maya. Uh, Houdini's getting really popular. Cinema 4D, of course. Uh, there's a lot of people turning up into that. Um, so I just wanted to point out some of the people that I've been seeing, no matter what program they're using it in, um, just like some awesome work that's been coming down the line. And a couple of people I, I wanna try and get on the show too. So first off, Jason Polly uh, posted this, I think yesterday, and it's an X particles render, and it's on Instagram, go follow him. Um, and he let me see the file too afterwards, but he's doing this really cool thing of using a transparent shader with an incandescent shader and blending the two together. So I'll play that right now. And you can see it gets like this really nice glow going to it and not needing to go into Fusion or Nuke or After Effects and do any post. Um, this is just all right in camera. So that's really cool. Um, and if you go look at my Instagram page, I, I made like a little shader with what he produced too. It makes this like a really cool crystallization crystallization and glowing effect. Um, maybe I'll just pull that up right now really quick too. So like this right here. So this is self illuminating. This is completely black and then with light. So um, it's, it's pretty cool. It's like a crystal that self illuminates and just does some cool stuff. Uh, and I'm really thankful that Jason let me take a look at that file. And then coming up in a couple weeks on June 7th, I believe. Let me pull up my calendar really quick. June, yeah. So the first Thursday in June, uh, Nate Rodriguez Vera is gonna come on the show and talk about uh, his work. What's up, Tokyo? I was just talking about you. 
Um, so yeah, Nate Rodriguez, not, ugh, Nate Rodriguez Vera is going to come on the show, talk about his work, and he's been doing some awesome stuff with X Particles lately too. I know it's two back to back X Particles, but just like some really cool stuff right here. And then uh, here's another one. This one is really awesome. You're here for the Houdini. What's up, Grant? Um, but if you missed Nate's talk at NAB, it's, you can go find his talk on Cineversity, and he talked about his workflow a little bit. We're going to have him on uh, in, what is that, two weeks, three weeks? Let's see. One, two, three, three weeks. Um, another shout out to Billy, who's just been like kicking ass, who was on the show, like, God, like a month ago now or however long ago. Um, so he just put out this Gundam piece, if you guys haven't seen it all sound designed and everything. I think I have my sound off. Hold on, let me turn that up for you guys. Yeah, Tokyo, some nerve. So, Gurnge, Mr. Billy Chicken, it's been just like churning out stuff left and right. I think this one even has sound. Yeah, a little bit. This is all Redshift work. And last, Zachy, Zachary Darren, uh, who's Zachary Corzine, Corzine, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, Zach. Um, I was just talking to him the other day. He just got hired by Man vs. Machine, but he's been doing a lot of Redshift work lately. He told me too. Um, and this cool piece that was just posted, which looks like, I think was in Houdini based on hashtags, uh, even has Redshift tagged at the end there. So I'm hoping this was also in Redshift, but also has Octane tagged as well. So who knows, it may just, be a bunch of stuff um regardless just really cool work and congrats on getting hired by man versus machine they're awesome i love the work there too but he also spoke at uh nab so go check out that talk too where he talked about how he did all this stuff in cinema 4d and dynamics and just like really cool cool work um so yeah you bet it's X particles? I don't know, really? It doesn't, it doesn't have an X particles tag. I mean, it does it has Cinema 4D, but then all the way at the bottom it says Houdini and Redshift. And most of the time, like I, I kind of looked at these just to see how he's tagging things. And. Yeah, uh, let's see, diving deeper into Redshift. So here's another one. So if you take a look through, you'll see he's starting to tag Houdini effects and Redshift at the end. Like he's got Houdini up here, but this extra tag here and at the bottom there. I didn't know he did Houdini either. Um, so that's news to me. Like if we watch this one, which he presented at NAB, yeah, it's got... Oh, it has Houdini effects there too, but he presented this at NAB. So I know it was made with some 40. Hmm, hmm. We have to do some investigation. Okay, well, that is what it is. Anyway, congrats to Zach on getting hired by Man vs. Machine because he's super talented. All right, so uh, that's enough for like tag snooping. Totally, man. I gotta, I gotta hit up those tags, figure out how I can get 30,000 followers. Um, all right, so you'll see in a second, we've got Houdini loaded. All right, so as I was saying towards the beginning, and if you missed it, I've been dicking around with Houdini for like a year. So I, I'm no expert. Um, I've been going through the Jumpstart series and a bunch of other series on and off throughout a year. Whenever I have downtime with clients, I try and get in Houdini and try and learn it more and more so I can hopefully one day progress into it and make it my program of choice. So if he's not Corzine, he's definitely gonna come over to the, oh yeah, he's definitely coming over to Houdini now that he's got man versus machine. So true, Grant. Um, anyway, so what I was saying is, if you have any like technical Houdini problems, I'm probably not the guy to ask. <laughs> I like, I, I'm, I'm using Houdini as like, a stepping stone to try and push what I can do in Cinema 4D a little bit further. Um, so I'm still using Cinema 4D 
almost every day. I'm coming in here just to like push my skills and, and get to the next level as best as I can. Um, but this is going to be like a general overview of almost like my first video that I did a long time ago. Almost, man, it's, it's coming up on a year, It'll be a year this fall. Um, just like how to get set up, what everything looks like button wise and what happens if you press them and where things go and, and all that, especially if, if you're kind of on the fence about using Redshift or you've been using it in Cinema 4D and you want to try out Houdini and you want to make the transition into it. So <laughs> ask Grant, Yeah, man, ask Grant. Come come join the BroGraph Slack and uh, get in that Houdini channel and ask Grant and Mark. Man, I wish Mark was watching right now. Maybe he is in secret. So anyway, so I've got just a basic scene set up with geometry. Uh, I'm not gonna go over the ins and outs of Houdini. Like there's way too much to cover. Um, but if you are a Houdini user, you'll you'll recognize this kind of layout. Basically, we've got a viewport here. You can tumble around, normal stuff, move them in and out. And this is geometry. If we come in here, I've got this file loaded with just this skull head OBJ nothing fancy. I don't have anything else loaded. So right up here, I've got this toolbar of all the Redshift uh, options. So if you click Redshift, it's going to mostly set up everything for you. And you'll see it'll take us to our tape or our, our out channel. And right in here, we get our ROP settings and then just the IPR. And I'll open the IPR in a second, but just like you would in um, your render settings for Cinema 4D. You've got all this information right here. Mark will sign in just as I sign out, probably. <laughs> Swirling in flip, half drowning, yeah. Oh, what's up, Nick? Thanks for the intro, you're welcome, man. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. So this ROP right here is gonna be just like your settings in Cinema 4D. Um, you'll probably recognize a lot of it but there's a little bit more that you can choose. Like you can choose your camera, you can override camera resolution. There's a lot more things that you can get into here than you can in Cinema 4D. They place it really well in here. I think it's really nice having everything right in one spot um, and you can change so much more instead of going in and putting tags on things and trying to override things here and there. A lot of that's covered right in your Redshift settings. So let's go through this. You got main, which is just your render camera, override resolution here, override scene materials. So a lot of stuff you're used to seeing. Um, output, so this is where you're gonna choose your file prefix and AOV suffix and everything in between. How, like if you wanna open EXR, TIFF, everything. Like if, you, if you've been using Houdini at all, this should seem kind of commonplace. <laughs> All right, man. I'll talk to you later, Grant. Are there things Redshift uh, Houdini can do that C4D can't? Um, what's up, Mark? So, so far, the only things that I've seen are just like texturing. You can get a little bit crazier just because um, coming from like Mantra and being able to build such complex materials, it seems to be a little bit easier in Redshift, at least that's what I'm finding. I've talked to some people that say it's harder to build materials in Redshift or in Houdini. Um, I think that may be because nobody's walked through this before. So I'm hoping to, to um, squash that because <laughs> I've seen some stuff made and you know, it's just like you have all your attributes and like in Cinema 4D, like working with X particles, it's just a pain in the butt. And in here, I'm not gonna get into particles much tonight, if at all, but you, you can carry over particle color data just like you would in Mantra or Arnold or whatever render engine you're using. Um, while in Cinema 4D, it's kind of hacked together. It's like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Um, so stuff like that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so I'd say that's that's the one advantage is that because Cinema 4D is based on so many third party plugins like X Particles that you know you kind of have to wait for X Particles and Redshift to play nicely together while it's all built into Houdini from the ground up. So it it just kind of works. 
Um, so anyway, back to output. Here's where everything is. Uh, AOV passes, processing, gamma, like just all the controls you want under redshift. This is where you get into like sampling. So normal stuff that you would see in Cinema 4D, minimum samples, maximum samples, uh, your error thresholds here. So, you know, I generally like, like 256 and probably 16. And sampling overrides, which is in its own tab, which is really nice. You don't have to scroll all the way down. It's just right there. <laughs> uh, whatever else. Uh, so yeah, miscellaneous. So this is like the photometric units. Um, and, and brightness and your candle settings, stuff that I never mess with. I usually just do it on a per light basis. Motion blur, optimizations, so you know global overrides, te texture sampling, if you wanna have it by linear point, all that. Global illumination, so that's this is all right in here, just like you would in Cinema 4D. So really, if if you have been using Redshift at all in any other program, it's, it's really similar, you just, kind of have to know the program that you're using. Um, so same tabs that you would get inside Cinema 4D, subsurface scattering, just like you would get in Cinema 4D, volumetric scattering. Um, I think that's a little bit different too, that we don't have a volumetric scattering tab in Cinema 4D, but this is just like environment. Um, so like an overall environment object that you would have in Cinema 4D. And then just normal system stuff and memory, automatic memory management, and then just standard stuff and IPR and all that. So that's pretty much the ROP. Like if, if, you're, if you're used to seeing either Maya, Cinema 4D, wherever you've been using Redshift, um, it, it generally all carries over pretty nicely. And this IPR here is just to like say, what ROP is this linked to if you're having different setups? So if you want one for, you know, preview passes and you want one for um, final render and things like that, you just link these together. I don't really ever bother with that because I'm not doing a bunch of multiple takes and systems through here. So let's go in and just do something basic, like uh, some lights and material. So we're gonna go to object right here and you'll see our skull is back there. And so we've got some lights up here. You can also just hit tab and do RS and you'll see, get all these options here. So just like everything else, you can add a light in and I'm gonna go through here and look through this light and lock it down. Just kinda of get it set up wherever I want. And maybe something over here. All right, so all of our light transfer settings are in here. So when you move stuff around, you'll see it updates right in there. And if I were to unlock this, you can change the icon scale and you have look at options. So I can just throw the skull in here and it would look at it. Um, so here's where everything's gonna be set. So right now I've got a distant light on. Let's go ahead and just change that to an area light. Of course, you've got point and spotlight and you can change your samples right in here. And then if you have a volume, you change your samples down here in contribution, which we're not doing any of that. However, I will boost this up to like 512 for later when we're looking at our IPR and render view. Um, what else? Do, 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 shader. So shader is gonna be where you set your color or temperature. And right now, it's kind of low, we just boost this up a little bit. And so now that we've got a light in our scene, why don't we see the different ways that we can look at this? So you can go into your render view, hit render, and
There we go. I see the bars moving again. Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay. Good. Good. See a lot of people. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. I wonder if that's why. Hmm. I was very strange that my audio went out and Houdini crashed. So let's let's get back into this. All right. So we've got our light here, and I'm going to go back in and just create an area really quickly and lock this down so I can look through the light. Cool. So I'm going to create a camera just like I was before. And just watch right here. As soon as I hit camera parms for perimeters, right there. So this is where you're going to adjust depth of field and everything. You can set up your camera. So right now, I'm going to go back into this camera view and make sure I lock it down. Back this out a little bit. There we go. And we'll come back into our render view. And I'm probably going to have to create another. Yeah, it's because I crashed. I need to create another Redshift one. There we go. Cool. Get back off that. Come into our RUP. Make sure the camera's set up. Cool. Why is my light just not bright enough? what happens when you crash. <laughs> All right, come on. All right, I'm going to go back out and kill this camera because that should. That's weird that I'm getting that error. Camera. Wow. I am really sorry, guys. This is turning out to be a crashy event. It's not usually like this. Is my audio still going? OK, good. I can crash with audio now. All right. This is not turning out to be such high praise for Redshift right now. Let's try this one more time. And maybe I just won't make a camera. Should be fine, though. It's kind of obnoxious. All right, lock that down, move this up, make this an area light. Cool, I'm gonna move this back even more. Go ahead and unlock that and just move my view over here. Render view. So it seems like my USB cable for my uh, amp keeps kicking in and out. So um, if it happens again, I'll just do a restart and we'll restart the whole stream. I'll restart my computer and that. I'm gonna move my mic up too. Maybe I'm just like shocking it or something. Um, so. <laughs> the channel all right cool 
Um, so what's the last thing you guys heard? So where did I cut out? Just checking with you guys in the chat. Mark, if you're still watching, what, what's the last thing you heard? <laughs> or I'll just continue from where I was. All right, I'm going to continue. Anyway, oh, there it goes. Chat's catching up. It seems to cut out when you start the IPR. That's really interesting. And it seemed to cut out, too, when I like brought in that camera. I don't have like anything else turned on. USB wise, I don't think. I'm just making sure like my Oculus <laughs> didn't randomly kick on. Um, so, all right, so I'm gonna backtrack two steps. So we have the render view here, we have the IPR. Hopefully that doesn't kill my audio, like Mark was just saying. Um, and then you have your render view here, which you get a little bit more control so you can do bucket rendering. Yeah, but I'm doing the same thing that I always do. Like th I, it's the exact same setup from my Brayu Cinema. So it is what it is. So anyway, it, it's everything that you would get inside Cinema 4D's render view. So you can do RGB, alpha, and so yeah, you can do individual split outs too. You can do cropped render region, bucket rendering, uh, freeze tessellation and then even clay if you want, which you don't really need for right now. We'll just go back to regular and then save your picture samples as well. So that, that's pretty much it. The light is exactly what you would expect. You can adjust your samples right here. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Honestly, I'm kind of starting to think it was my mic being very close to my keyboard tonight. And so um, I'm not getting too close to it possibly static. Um, so what else can we do? I'll bring in a camera again. Hopefully it doesn't freak things out by putting a Redshift tag on it. So far, so good. I haven't killed anything. Cool. All right, so just like you would in Cinema 4D with a camera tag, it's the same thing. So in here, you get enabled depth of field. You get your exposure settings, tone mapping, everything down there, black crush, whatever you want to use, lens distortion. Um, so that's all right there. And then uh, you can also do focus distance, f-stop, all your normal redshift settings carry over as well. So nothing surprising there. So let's talk about adding materials because that's like the, the fun part of this. And I'm going to go ahead and just go into this look dev build. So you can see what's going on and going to here. Let me just see if it will let me add the IPR. It won't. I don't have this set up for Houdini, do I? Or for Redshift. All right, that's all right. We'll just stick with this look for now and come back to our IPR. Just let that go. And cool, killed that. All right, so for materials, there's a few ways you can go about doing it. A lot of people like to add their materials in a shop network here, but you can actually just build a shop network into your objects area and your, um, and just bring them in right directly. So let's go ahead and Let's just do a material right here. We'll connect this up. As soon as I turn that on, nothing happens. So if I bring up this, it still looks the same. So we're going to add a shop network right in here. And now we're inside of a, this like mini shop network that's inside of our sphere. And we can type RS and get all the same Redshift materials that you're used to. So architectural. Car paint, hair, uh, incandescent, material, 
just like normal material, skin and some surface scattering and volume. So we'll just make a normal material for the time being. I'm gonna rename this to uh, basic. And if we come back out here, we can come to our material tab right here in our sphere. We've got our shop net and you're gonna select basic and just hit accept. Come in here, you'll see now that we've got this plastic view on that. And I think that I, the render view does a little bit better job. I think it will stay on top too if I keep moving around. Yeah, good, it will stay on top. So let's update some things. And we have all the same custom settings. So if you want gold, just do gold. And we've only got one light in the scene, so it's just gonna have that one spot reflection. Um, we do lead. Why don't I just go ahead and come back out and add another light. Come back out, there we go. And we'll just copy this one over. Through light two. I didn't lock it. <laughs> Look through light two, there we go. And this one, cool, my audio is still going. Cool, I think I think we're good. I think moving the mic was the, the key thing. I'm gonna make this one like a little bit warmer color, go like that. Let's do a quick refresh. And maybe even, Make this one a little bit bigger. So I think we're gonna just make it a little bit taller. Like five, something like that. And I'll even throw down a plane so we can really see everything that's happening. Or sorry, a grid, thinking in C4D terms. I should do this outside. Cool. All right, let's unlock that. Go back to camera. Just do a quick refresh. There we go. All right, so now we can see a little bit more. Um, this grid I can make a little bit bigger. Let's do like 50 by 50. So inside our sphere, we'll go back into our shop net and same basic stuff that you get inside Cinema 4D, you're gonna get right here. So, um, you know, if you wanna adjust your weight or your roughness, so because it's lead, obviously there's no diffuse. So let's go to plastic, we'll get some of that going again. I'm just gonna make this blue. If you wanna adjust your roughness, that's all right here, just like you would expect. Backlighting tr translucency, if you guys haven't used Redshift um, inside Houdini or Cinema 4D, if you're watching this for the first time and wondering how to get started, I have a whole series on this in Cinema 4D that translates over really nicely. It's all the same. You'll, you'll notice, you know, this looks exactly just like a, a material setup inside Cinema 4D. So if we want to add uh, some roughness to our reflection, that's right there. You can see that roughen up. One thing that I will say is, it, no offense to Cinema 4D, but it seems like it's a little bit faster to update, even just with like progressive. I know it's a really simple scene, but like it just does it. Sometimes there's a little bit of a hiccup inside Cinema 4D. Um, so that's one nice thing. And let's see, subsurface scattering, that's all right here. Your coding settings are right here. Up to uh, overall settings for emission and opacity and tint and then optimizations if you want to have any cutoffs. And then of course, if you need to convert from glossiness to roughness and things like that. So while we're talking about that, why don't we talk about how to bring in some textures? So, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, allow editing. I was trying to remember if I had to do that or not. All right, so inside our material, you're gonna see everything. This is where you can start to get like really advanced stuff going on. So I just hit this three tag. Cinema is lagging behind in features in this process opinion. Uh, I mean, right now, Cinema and Houdini have the same features. Um, 
if you play with their experimental builds, technically, I think Cinema might be a little bit ahead because they have the AI denoisers, but they suck anyway. They, they haven't really been working that great. Um, so, you know, I think the only other thing that I said in the beginning was it's a little bit easier to make some really cool custom materials inside of Houdini, just because it's all built from the ground up to do that while Cinema is not really built for that. So, um, so yeah, texture, really simple. If you, you just type texture and you'll see RS texture comes up. I'll do it one more time. Do texture, RS texture, and you go find it. So I'm gonna go find one. I think it's my G drive, right? F E E drive. Let's go find some textures. I'm used to visual cues. And let's see. We'll do TFM and we'll just do a grunge one. We're doing grunge 02. So let's do, we'll just do basic roughness to get started. And no, that's not where we want that. Just disconnect that. Oh, it's got to convert the texture now, just like it does in Cinema 4D. We'll just give it a second to do its thing. Hopefully I didn't cause this to crash again. <laughs> I don't feel really badly. At least my audio is still going. There we go, done converting. All right, so we're gonna go to our reflection roughness, plug, plug that in there. I'm gonna go ahead and just rename this roughness and turn on our gamma override. Just hit refresh on that, make sure going. I don't know why I just got an error. Let me bring this up a bit. Two. Right, maybe the scale is too big. Let's try um, four by four. See if we can get these scratches to show up. So I want to. All right, with about two point two five. Hmm. Interesting. All right, let me try another texture. This is why you rehearse and you build things beforehand. Uh, all right, I'm going to do normal. Let's see if we can get the normal going. So just like this scares you, it shouldn't scare you, Billy. You're so used to nodes, dude. It's the same nodes, okay? So this is gonna be normal. Oh, you know what, I don't know if um, normal map has been deprecated in Houdini. I think it has. And we're gonna do our texture right there. Input, just like you're used to. And then we're gonna go to overall, bump input. And we're just gonna wait a second for this to convert. Hopefully it doesn't freak out again. But. Billy, I gave you a nice little shout out with your Godzilla and Gundam earlier. I don't I don't think you were around for that. All right, there we go. Done, waiting events. All right, let's see what's going on here. Enable. Right, that should just be what it is. Tangent space. Oh, interesting. What is happening here, guys? Oh, you saw Deadpool 2? How was that? I still need to see Avengers. All right, let me put some this object material on here and see. Um, let's see if that helps. I don't know why it is not on our textures, come on. I'm sorry, guys. 
this is not working out the way that I anticipated. Come on. All right, I'm gonna try one other thing. I'm gonna come back out to here and just do a quick transform. And scale this up a good bit. Just do okay. That there. All right. Render view. Wow. Why are the textures not coming through? That's driving me crazy. All right, so there's another way that you can set up materials, but I've always been told to not do it that way. Um, I might try that in a second. Maybe they changed something since I've last tried to, to render Redshift in Houdini, but... Um, Yeah, it should be really straightforward. So that is that. Come in here, hook these up. Let's check in the roughness. If I adjust the gamma, you can see it doing stuff, but it's like it's not picking up the rest of this. Just make sure it's not killing the details in there. Wow, okay. I'm gonna try the other way that you can set up materials. Um, let me just put a null. Let me just kill, call this out. One other thing to try. And Okay, that didn't do it. Let's try that. It's not doing it. Just to make sure, I'm selecting that. Yeah. Have to accept that. Okay. Well, guys, I'm failing you tonight. I'm really sorry. <laughs> this is how it's supposed to work. And those materials aren't showing up. I might try and just bring in another object and see if we can get that going. So file. I'm just bringing a Megascans object. And if that doesn't work, then I know something's up because You know, it usually doesn't take this long to do things. It's just like my mic cut out three times and then Houdini crashed twice. And uh, yeah, I'm just not having a good stream <laughs> tonight. So yeah, we'll just deal with it the best way we can. So mega scans, let's just come in here. Uh, we'll do this stump and I don't need a sequence. All right, so we've got this set up. Let's just start getting back to where we need to go. And move our light back up here. Move light two back over here. I'm gonna probably have to turn up the intensity on these a little bit back to our camera view. This is why I'm afraid of terrified or terrified of demoing things live on the internet. Yeah, you know, uh, I was feeling okay about it. Now I'm kind of not not liking this. I'm not liking having this fail. So it is what it is. Shader, I'm gonna just add a zero onto that. And over here. Uh, 
here, add a zero onto that one. All right, try this one more time. Go inside, let's do another shop network, material. Cool. Okay, inside of our shop network, do Redshift, not Redshift network, because it already builds that for you with your material. I call this tree. Come in here, do allow editing. Come in here, cool. All right, why is that hanging around still? But come on, get off that. There we go. All right, so we're gonna bring in a texture. And we're gonna go back out. Go back up one. Let's go back in here, 3D. Why? Vito, we're going to plug that into diffuse color. And I'm going to give it a second, see if it converts on its own, or if I have to have the render view open. Okay, I'm going to do enable RGB. All right, I think it's because I haven't selected it out here. Try this one more time. Tree, accept. There we go. Okay. I'm not crazy. It was just not liking the French monkey's texture for whatever reason. All right. We can still make it through this stream. We're going to do it. Everything is taking a couple more tries than I initially thought. I should have planned this out, but I promise it's worth it. All right. So um, got that done. I'm just going to rename this really quickly. Diffuse. Feeling better now. <laughs> Call this roughness. All right, so just like everything else we were already talking about with SIMA 4D, you can do it all here, plug this in. It's gonna take a second to convert, just let it do its thing. So it looks like it already converted and you can already see that it's done a much better job here. Uh, I'm gonna go and change my ROP settings to make sure we're not doing half res, there we go. Which, by the way, when is Grayscale Gorilla going <laughs> to announce half res? Is anyone else waiting on that besides me? Because I'm, I'm really wanting to go. And um, I want to start making plans now for September if it's going to happen. So, Chad, if you're out there watching, I want to know. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go back to our object, go back in here. Before I do that, let's name this tree because it's not a sphere and come back into All right, audio should be back. Sorry, dude. I I have no idea why my audio keeps cutting out. I, I yeah, I got it. Sorry, guys. I have to like pull my USB back in and out when that happens. Oh man, just rough night. Technical errors user error maybe with the whole thing that went on with the textures not working. All right, so AO.
Okay, I just changed USB ports. Um, hopefully that helps. Is that working better, guys? I hope. Everything seems to be going all right. Hopefully this new port is fine. Ugh, that's obnoxious. Thanks, Billy. Out of all the live streams <laughs> I've done, it figures that when I change programs, it acts up and like everything acts up. So, um, so yeah, I just plugged in some AO into the diffuse. We've got a roughness and then I'm just gonna bring in another texture and this will be our normal. Actually, no, I don't want that. I want bump. So that's the correct way to do it now. Pipe that texture into here and put, and before I do that, make sure I get the right gamma going. Oh, cool. That like just already converted that really fast. And make sure that's correct. Interesting is, I wonder, is it normal? Normal map still being used. Huh, so that was not working correctly. Let me try this one more time. Is it not deprecated in? I don't know if it can translate to one program or another. I haven't tried it. I am pulling from translated ones. So it seems like it's been a little bit faster. Um, Let me see something. Preferences. Actually, options. Oh, you know what? It's using the exact same cache folder. So yeah. So some of the ones that are still cached, it should just be there too. Using a UV project node set to polar should work to set up your sphere. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. Because yeah, I didn't have any UV set up before too. You are right, Mark. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> so um, I also wanna know if, if they're still using the normal map node for this, because um, I thought it was deprecated throughout, but It seems like it's the same. Texture, put. Cause this, like I, sh I mean, that looks like it has a lot more detail to it. Come in here, do like negative eight. Really got that deep tail. Huh. Interesting. So really, it should be using tangent, but it looks like crap. Height field actually looks okay. Object tangent looks crazy. Interesting. I'll have to play around with that because um, inside Cinema 4D, the normal map has been deprecated and Yeah, because you can't adjust like the MIP settings and things like that. Um, but it's not working correctly here. I wonder if that's a known bug. I 
that's just changing the color mostly. Tangent not working. Ha. Huh. Okay. Anyway. Because you don't know any better. That's fine. It just it doesn't scale properly. Um, as you can see, like here, like we get all these little details in there. But then if I bring it in with this, the details are like super mushy. Hmm. I'll have to look into that because um, it shouldn't be adjusting the color and it should be letting me use tangent space, which it's not. And it should also let me remap it if necessary. All right, whatever. I'm done playing around with that. So what Mark was talking about earlier is in um, Redshift, you don't get UV maps for free <laughs> um, with primitive objects. So you actually have to throw down, I'm going to make a new sphere out here, throw down UV coordinates for this. Take that. All right, make this a polygon mesh. Make sure, yep, cool. It's a little big. Um, and you were saying UV project for sphere? Yeah, OK. Cool. And then uh, RS material. Gear. There we go, sphere. Okay, so far so good. I'm gonna make this whatever, like that. Oh, editing, come in here. Get all these just like I want. Or Texture is faster. All right, Mark, I hope you're right. So come back up, 3D textures. Let's do scratches this time, do five. That only has glossy in there, that was weird, okay. Um, roughness, good. Nable, just gonna pause that for a second so it doesn't freak all the way out. And reflection, roughness, there we go. Hmm, I don't know, Mark. Something's weird. Something strange. Who are you gonna call? Mark Fancher. Houdini Master. Just, just thinking again. I shouldn't have to think if I turn on RGB. I guess it's converting it to an RGB one. It's fine. So UV channel, UV, that's right. Make it editable. Yeah, I'll throw it in a connect object, Billy. That's how we solve things, right? Are there, oh, there are spaces. Good catch. I remember having that issue last year. What the hell? Uh, so this is the unzipped. I don't put spaces in things. Okay, I'm not gonna freak out. 
an anger about that. Good freaking catch. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna try this tech it one. Grant, genius, there, that's showing up. Okay. Okay, so that's what it is, is Houdini is very particular. You can't have spaces in things. And yes, Billy, someone with a Mac makes a texture pack. You can't have spaces in things. Doesn't work. Uh, okay. Man, Grant, way to chime in. Dude, I was losing my cool. No, nothing new. Like, old man Klish losing his cool. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in a little bit closer and take a look at this so you guys can see what's happening. I don't want that full screen. There we go. As you can see, we brought in this texture and I hooked it up to the roughness. I can probably even put it up to a, a bump map. It should work just as well. And come in here, texture, input, and make it a bump. There you go. Cool. <laughs> you guys are like the Voltron of Houdini. And then in here, it can get even more details. And if you guys have ever been working inside either program and you're not getting the details you want, like sharper edges, turn your MIP down to like negative eight, or you, you could probably even turn off magnification. That helps sometimes too, but it gives you a lot more details. <laughs> it's okay, Mark, you can have all the caps you want. You're, you're Houdini-tron at the moment. Um, so anyway, this has kind of been a basic walkthrough of how to use Redshift and Houdini. I like totally botched this guys. I'm really sorry. I don't know why my equipment keeps cutting in and out. It hasn't cut out since I changed USB ports. Thank God for that. Um, but just like total, total failure had, had Redshift crash or not Redshift, but Houdini crash like three times. Um, so I'm going to scroll through the chat a little bit and see if I missed anything. Cause I got to tell you, I was freaking out a little bit and my light isn't even on. So my face isn't lit up properly. Jesus, what is, what's going on tonight? All right. So Cool. All right. New messages. Let me go to the new messages. Houdini sapped all the resources from the workstation. Not usually, not, it's usually not that, that bad. Like kind of, kind of sucks that that happened. So anyway, um, as you can see, we're like right up in this tree's butthole at the moment. I'm going to back this off. Don't want to be in the tree's butthole. Here we go. And I can probably reset this grid to just be like that, back to normal. Cool. Um, so yeah, one thing I, I think that is a little bit better about using Houdini for Redshift is it just seems faster. Like it just seems to update immediately. Like if I go to bucket mode, I know it's a simple scene, but it just seems to work. And then Yeah, I'm totally gonna put that in the description. Struggle Stream 2018. God, it sounds like an ad for like prostate cancer or something. <laughs> so <laughs> right up there in the tree's butthole. Uh, uh, maybe I'll change the recording of that to this. It, it describes this stream very well. So anyway, if if you're used to using Houdini or sorry, Redshift in, in any other capacity in Maya or Cinema 4D. It's really similar. I say don't be afraid of it. Um, even though I've had a lot of problems tonight, just remember you can't have spaces and things. That's one of the key things. 
Uh, don't screw that up. Use underscores. Um, but th like this material, Billy, I know you're still watching. It's still the same as everything else. So, you know, you've got your base property tabs and all these are, are green just because we're like inside the VOP net for this. But um, it, it's nothing, nothing crazy. You know, this is diffuse just like you would get in Cinema 4D um, at the expense of, uh, no, I, I'm afraid of, no, I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna open up uh, a, mater a Redshift material inside Cinema 4D and show you the same. <laughs> the number of unused nodes on that material node. Dude, I know, I know but you can collapse it down like that. How about that? And you can collapse it down all the way if you want. You can collapse all these down. Isn't that cool? And look at this. You can go grid lines and they're snapping. So you can have things really organized. All right, this normal map isn't actually there. And guess what? You can hit L and it will line things up automatically. Boom. Yeah, Houdini notes. Man, that it's it's like day and night. So, all right, let's let's take a look just to do a comparison. So here's base properties. I'm gonna come in here and create a redshift material. Um, just need the shader graph. Oh, it didn't. Okay, I was gonna say it's gonna crash because I'm trying to run two instances of it, but it's not. All right, so we've got this here, and you can see it's exactly the same. It's not as pretty looking, but diffuse, diffuse, reflection, reflection, refraction, subsurface, refraction, subsurface. You didn't know there was a grid, dude. There's two types of grids. There's grid lines and grid points. And uh, I think you can, I, I don't know if it's still available. Yeah. Um, yeah, they finally brought back what kind of wire style you can have. So like standard or all this default color themes flare themes. I, I'm sure you know about all this. Grid spacing. So if you want to have tighter grids or wider grids. <laughs> Houdini nodes are the Steve Jobs of Apple nodes. Totally, yeah. Like, and like, I also love that you can read all of these too and know what the hell they are. Like I come into Cinema 4D and what is this? RS materials getting a little tight. Get, uh, can't, can't read it. No, it, uh, oh boy. Okay. Anyway, so these tabs are all identical. Um, I wanna try something cause I have not tried it yet. Noise, there we go. Um, yeah, so noise is the same for RS noise. But I wanna I think, should be able to, yeah, so you can do a sub network in here too, which means, yeah, you should be able to get like super complex with these, right? Because, or is it just keep it? Oh, I thought I was finding a hack. I guess they're all consolidated to Redshift, even in the subnet. I was gonna say, it'd be really great if you could bring in like turbulence. Can you, how about like binds? No, that's all right. So 
anyway, pretty, pretty simple to get through. If you haven't used any kind of third-party renderer inside of Houdini, I totally recommend getting started with Redshift. One, it's fast. Two, it is really just easy to get into, even though I just flailed <laughs> all evening. Um, you can go to the top here and go in your shop net and just have really easy access to settings right here. Oh man, you guys are having like a full-blown conversation. Uh, no, not even no kissing, butthole thing. You can act them. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't happen there. Uh, yeah, you can access, uh, I think. Well, I was gonna say you can do Vex inside here and it works. Um, I feel like I've had to use like at CD and some stuff too. Yeah, Bill, you ask him about half res because I want to know. Um, Grant, I know what you're talking about. I'm just like too <laughs> flustered and tired from all the, the screw ups to even think clearly anymore. Um, so that is what it is. But I'm going to come back in here and just show this sphere one more time and we'll just move it up. We'll just move it up. There we go. And open our render view one more time. Um, so everything else that's in here is just like you would expect. You've got proxy settings right in here. You've got your object uh, settings in here. So you just click on whatever geometry it is, hit that, and then you get your Redshift object tag. So you can set up your proxies. You can set up um, tessellation. Tessel oh my gosh, tessellation, instancing, attributes, trace sets. Also awesome about using Redshift in Houdini is you get trace sets. Cinema 4D still doesn't have trace sets, or if it does, I don't know where the hell it is. I haven't been able to find it. Um, unless like, or I, I guess they they have trace sets in the sense of, let me just bring in an object here and Redshift object tag. You can do exclusion and stuff like that, but you can't have like full sets of things. Um, like you can in here. So if you want to make like a full set, you can do that. You can create bundles and bring them in. Um, so that's great. Yeah, so Redshift for Houdini does support particles and liquids. And uh, can you export them as VDV, VDB volumes and import them into Redshift for my, yeah. So you can do all that. Um, I know Grant, who was in the chat, figured out a way to uh, bring over vertex attributes properly and things like that. Um, but you can totally do all that. Um, the only thing that won't won't carry over is materials and stuff. Like if you make a, a Redshift proxy, that will carry over. But if you make an Alembic, it won't carry over your texture details and things like that. That's the one thing, like I can't make a material here in Cinema 4D and then go into Houdini and import that material. I have to remake it. Um, that I mean, that's the, the only downside, but you can totally, you know, do particles in here and it will carry over. Let me, um, I'll just do that for fun right now. See if I can get it to work. Rowan Dalvey has a whole series on Redshift in Houdini. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get this to work. Update. I think I have to go back out and say. To render these as a point, I may even have to. Yes, R19, you can bring any attribute via vert map with Alembic. There's Grant answering the question. Um, particles, there we go. Render object as particles. Let me 
Why'd you go black? There we go. So there it is. Um, just like that, you get your particles. Um, and then if you're doing other stuff up here, like per particle colors and things like that, then you can come into your subnet and go into your material and you can use VEX and uh, everything in here just like you would everywhere else. Why did I pin that? There we go. I didn't need that pinned. So come in here. And so let's say you needed your at CD. It would just pick that up. And so right now it's black, of course. So if I hit render here, why is it picking up tan? Did not override down in here. Should have. Is it just picking up? Oh, I think it's just picking up all the lighting. Um, anyway, it, it carries over, I promise. White, white. Okay, it should carry over. I promise it carries over. I'm just having a night. <laughs> um, but you can come in and you can write little vex things and bring all your your details and um, and get it to work on per particle basis and get really complex things going. Um, I think parameter. No, that just makes me makes it want to build a parameter. So. Yeah, I guess that's it. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'm gonna go about like five more minutes. Again, I am really sorry that this was so rough. Um, definitely just sucks when that happens. So I'm gonna look in here and see if it updates. Why is that not? <sighs> okay. Well, I promise I've gotten it to work with particles. Um, let me just bring up Vimeo. What's up, Brayden? And Ro and Dolby. So Ro and Dolby has a great free intro series to Redshift inside of Houdini. Um, but I th he he didn't get that far into it. I think he only did maybe okay so he's got like five lessons and they're kind of broken down into different bits of like specular models um, some of them focus on both Houdini and Redshift um, it says lesson five but I guess he's considering this lesson four but that's this is Houdini and Redshift um, this is shader building and it doesn't go into too much more detail than what we went into tonight don't mess with the Rowan. Yeah, man, Rowan's awesome. Um, he gives away a bunch of free stuff, and he's got paid stuff too. But if if you're looking to get started with Houdini, he's great. Um, who else? And Tagma, and then uh, Houdini Jumpstart, which you can get the whole bundle on Hello Lux. Um, that's great. But if you're looking for like material specific in Houdini, this is just like an introduction. Um, this is lighting, but he, he breaks it down a lot more than I do. He just says like what an area light is and what it does. Um, shader building, like it's very lightly touched on. It's only 20 minutes and then particles. I think if I remember watching it, it, it is like 10 or 15 minutes each of Octane and Redshift. Just very basic. Um, and then specular models. But then it stops and he starts going back to um, Octane for a little bit. And then he comes back, back to procedural displacement. Hmm. Let's kind of jump around a little bit. <laughs> He's even got Arnold too. So anyway. Dude, I love a good, sharp cheddar. Like, 
like New York, extra sharp. I mean, I want to age like five years. Like when I, I mean, sharp enough to cut my tongue sharp. I love extra sharp or like, man, you know, what's really good is like a super aged provolone. Oh yeah. That's awesome. That like a good super aged provolone with like, um, man, what kind of sandwich am I trying to think of? Like on a Reuben? That's my jam. All right. So let's see. Favorite cheese. <laughs> Answered that. Um, got through that, through that, through that. All right, guys. So uh, here's the deal, too. I kind of announced it in the beginning, but I, I want to say it turned about for a sec and we're talking about jeez yeah billy we got to talk about everything um so in three weeks we're going to have oh, i closed it out <laughs> go to instagram um, we're gonna have nate rodriguez vera come on and talk about his work Chad, did somebody say half res? What's up, Chad? Man, I was just about to close this out. Now you're showing up. Dude, yeah, wh where, when's half res, man? I, I feel like we we bought tickets this time last year. Um. Anyway, we're going to have Nate Rodriguez Vera come on in about like two or three weeks, I think three weeks, and um, talk about what he's doing just talk about what he's doing with x particles and cinema 4d and go over a little bit about what he talked about at his talk at nab he's really awesome super chill guy um if you look through his work it's just kind of very minimalist but everything he's doing is all redshift um so i want to talk to him too about like how he's getting stuff like this if he's doing this in post in like photoshop or if he's doing it in fusion or nuke or what his workflow is um <laughs> lit up in the sky <laughs> um and then i was also talking to zach corzine about coming on too but he is moving to la at the moment to go work with man versus machine um so hopefully in the future we can have him on too so with that said if you guys know anyone that is doing some like killer uh, work with Redshift, and it doesn't matter what program, I don't really care about that, just like Redshift in general, let me know and I wanna try and get them on the show. I really wanna try and start alternating between like a lesson week and then a guest week, or even maybe like what, once a month having a guest. I would love to do every other week if I can get enough guests. Um, but just kind of keep alternating the way I have. So I had Tokyo Megaplex last week, do a lesson this week, or kind of a lesson, even though my equipment <laughs> kept failing and I was failing. Um, and then next week, I'd love to get a guest on if there's anyone. Billy, maybe if you want to come back on too. I know you had a lot of fun on here. Um, I, or you can talk about your Godzilla stuff that you've been doing or your Gundam breakdown. That'd be awesome if you're still in the chat. Um, but yeah. If, if there's anyone, please send me an email or leave a comment below. Uh, my email is liam at 531.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at 531. And yeah, but you're down to talk either. You're down to talk either. Oh, you mean like either week? Okay, cool. Or you mean either project? Doesn't matter. I'll ask you after. <laughs> I'll ask you in Slack. Um, but yeah, I just leave us some comments and I, I wanna start getting some cool guests on here for you guys too. So that's it for this week. I'm gonna try and follow up and like cut this thing down and cut all the parts of my mic failing and me getting out of my seat and like resetting my USB. I am totally sorry about that guys. Uh, also just like the file structure failure that Grant pointed out of why those textures weren't loading. That's a complete fail. I need to go in and, and rename those. I didn't even realize it because I don't have that problem inside Cinema 4D. Um, what else? But yeah, thanks for always hanging out. You guys were an awesome crowd tonight. Um, do you mean, oh yeah, totally, man. If you got a glow cap project, that's awesome. Um, thanks, Adam. 
And what else? Yeah, same old stuff. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I'll talk to you guys in like a week. And as always, if you have any questions, reach out and I'll be happy to answer them. See you guys.